Let's go back in time to the age when rallies were real marathons, held during day and nighttime, without the benefit of nowadays media coverage. Nevertheless, they attracted many enthusiasts who faced all weather to admire their drivers competing in 80 special stages, as happened in the Rack Rally of Great Britain, over distances of thousands of kilometers that often combined asphalt and gravel within the same special stage. The queens of the discipline are models with classic architecture, such as Ford Escort RS, Fiat 131 Abarth, Porsche 911, Opel Ascona 400, or Datsun Violet, all powered by a naturally aspirated engine and rear wheel drive. Nineteen eighty one would be the year of great commotions. Audi has adapted the all-wheel drive to a production car. The new turbocharged Quattro was unveiled at the Geneva Motor Show in 1980. To demonstrate the superiority of the new technology, Audi entered the World Rally Championship, a competition where you had to be fast on the hardest and most slippery roads in the world, the ideal terrain to demonstrate the advantage of all-wheel drive. Homologated in Group 4 from January 1st, 1981, Quattro was ready to show its fangs. On January 11th, 1981, in the debut race, Franz Wittmann and Audi Quattro won the Jena Rally in Austria and opened the new model's record list with a victory. A few days later, the world debut took place with a team that surprised everybody. Audi played on the seduction card and decided to bring a woman alongside Hanu Mikola, Michelle Mouton. From the start, the team dominated the Monte Carlo rally, but Michelle Mouton gave up with fuel blockage, while Hanu Mikola also stopped due to an accident. Audi was awaiting its revenge. One month after the Austrian victory, the championship caravan set off for Sweden to meet the ice and snow. On the ground that would become its best ally, nothing could stop the Quattro. After this success, Audi had to wait until October to taste the winner's champagne again. A well-deserved wait for a special flavored victory. We are in San Remo, the place where Michel Mouton entered the rallying golden books forever. It was the first time in the world championship history that men were outclassed by a woman. Before the end of the year, Mikola won the Rack Rally of Great Britain, 
but the world title was far away. The new Quattro suffering from inevitable childhood illnesses. Hence, the rival's reluctance to the need of all-wheel drive. Audi was going to do its homework to prove otherwise. With the team strengthened by the arrival of Stig Blomqvist to join Hanu Mikola and Michel Mouton, Audi embarked on the 1982 campaign with the idea of imposing the supremacy of the Quattro technology. After a natural victory in Sweden, the team collected seven wins in 12 rounds throughout the season, enough to secure the coveted manufacturer's title. But in the driver's battle, Mikola, Blomqvist, and Mouton lost the duel with Walter Röhl, who was a perfect match for the Opel Ascona. Michel Mouton finished second with three more victories in Portugal, Greece, and Brazil. In 1983, Audi missed the manufacturer's title by a whisker, surpassed by Lancia by two points. Disadvantaged by the considerable weight and the lack of agility, the Quattro Armada, now engaged in Group B, was defeated in Acropolis, New Zealand, and San Remo in rallies that were supposed to favor all-wheel drive. The consolation came from Hanu Mikola, who won the driver's title after signing four of the five Audi successes.
The coveted victory in the Monte Carlo Rally came when the curtain rose on the 1984 season. Its author, the newest member of the team, Walter Röhrl. He ended up in front of an Audi triple together with Stig Blomqvist and Hanu Mikola. After a new triple in Sweden and a victory in Portugal, the season had turned into a triumphant march for the Ingolstadt group. In Finch more agile thanks to the third or increased to 450 horsepower, while the Kevlar and composite materials prevailed in the construction of the car. Along the old Quattro, which continued its streak of success in Greece, New Zealand and Argentina, the short version brought the team its first victory in the Ivory Coast Rally. At the end of the season, Audi completed the Grand Slam by winning the manufacturer's title and the driver's championship with Stig Blomqvist. But the rivals gave up wasting time and moved on to developing Group B models that would benefit from the all-wheel drive advantage. In turn, Audi came with the latest version of the Quattro Sport, the S1. With an engine over 500 horsepower and a redesigned weight distribution, the car was launched in Argentina. A month later, we would witness its only victory in the San Remo Rally. Vanguardists and visionaries, the Audi engineers have created a car that still serves as a benchmark for any WRC model, a milestone and an engineering masterpiece.
Challenging the laws of physics, the Quattro's evolution turned into a poetic flow of a disarming simplicity, as seen from the outside. But inside the car, the action was explosive and difficult to describe in words. We are lucky enough to have the images that made the Quattro a fireball that we will never forget.
Thank you.